Um, first thing on our agenda this morning is the approval of the minutes from the January 9th and the February. We'll do those one at a time. So let's do an approval for the January 9th on council minutes. I move to approve the January 9th minutes. Second. second, second. So, motion by Matt, second by Steve. All those in any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. So, let's do an approval of February 6th, 2023. Motion for Matt for this. Second for Matt. I wouldn't even hear, so I don't know that I can say. Second for Matt Ham. Sure. Yeah, yeah, we would. Work. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Unanimously. Second item on the agenda today is the um, West Street. Money improvements, daily systems is here with that. The artists to James, Michael, you got it, or you want James? He's gonna introduce the panel. It's a third wheel up there. All right. All yours. Thank you, Bill. Uh, you guys have us back uh, this morning. Like Phil said, we're uh, presenting the West Street Harry to Pawnee Street project. Uh, I'm Michael Bailey with Trans Systems. With me at the top of the our artist on the project, uh, James Wagner. So a little timeline on the project is uh, we brought this design council on December 5th of last year uh, for our concept presentation. Uh, took some of those. Those items that you know that you mentioned uh, on those concepts, Mason revisions, uh, talking with city staff, and uh, Jeff Best. Jeff, Jeff Best is also on our team, unavailable to be here this morning. Uh, we basically revisioned those, you know, tweaked it around uh, a little bit, and have uh, have a final presentation uh, to present to you today with the uh, recommended action of approving the final design so we can incorporate this in plans. Uh, of the project. Uh, project letting is currently scheduled for September of 23. Uh, the art would be included in the roadway, roadway project. So just a quick overview of what we presented last time. This is an overview map of the entire Western uh, Harry to Pawnee project. It, it starts a little bit south of the current Pawnee and West Street intersection and extends all the way north uh, south of the Harry and West Street intersection for the previous West Street project. Uh, you also see there's improvements along uh, K42 and the current uh, Pawnee uh, for almost three quarters of a mile. The existing Southwest Boulevard that intersects with West Street today is also uh, improved with this project. Uh, the two intersections you see here today are combined into one, so we won't see two intersections when we get done with this project. The Southwest Boulevard, as you can see on the screen, uh, diverts uh, southerly, southerly and ties into the Pawnee uh, to create another intersection there. So there'll be a, a signal there as well. So this is just a quick overview of what we had shown last time and a reminder kind of what the project looks like. Another quick reminder is on the left side of the screen is area that we showed last time kind of the grid of the art location uh, based on some of the comments the topography of the site the right side of the screen is what was been revised and kind of lines up with the, with the railroad corridor as it runs up south with the border uh, the black square, the rectangle is the same grid as we shown before and that is where the guy being uh, our features would be uh, 
encompassed within that black square. So now we have a larger grid that Todd will explain further uh, later in the, in the presentation. It has trees you know, planted outside the initial area that was shown here. So this gives a bigger effect. It's still on the grid pattern. The trees outside of the black rectangle are still the same 20 by 20 grid, uh, but they're radically placed. And Todd will explain that. This is a more refined overview kind of, of the art feature and the intersection uh, as it's being designed now. As you can see, uh, <clears throat> there's not a lot of area to work with uh, in the art area. The art budget for this project is $125,000 total. So there's not a lot of money to work with uh, for this size of project. Um, but the one aspect we have discussed with the city is all the earthwork. I'll kind of explain, we do show some burn in the art feature. The earthwork for those berms and then the removal of the trees and then the planting of the new trees will be part of the roadway project, not of the art budget. So it gives us, you know, Todd as much money to work with his art feature. With that, I'll turn it over to Todd to explain the art feature. Good morning. Um, what you're seeing there, those three circles, uh, are three berms that are built up, mounds. Um, in our uh, original presentation, uh, I had the model that was just a five by seven grid with one hill at one end. Um, in the uh, suggestions of things to consider were uh, uh, along with the inclusion of additional land features uh, or land forms, um, we increased the number of berms within that to create a, a more fluid and undulating uh, topography through there. And I'll explain later um, or cover it again later. That contrasts with the plane that these beams and lights are set at. It accentuates that. <laughs> uh, in addition to uh, including additional landforms, uh, the other suggestions were types of lighting, collection of trees, and the uh, consideration of the color of the column. So I'll try to cover those. <laughs> uh, what do we do here, Michael? <clears throat> okay. uh. okay. Okay, the proposed column uh, in dealing with the light. Um, we've selected a uh, 5,000 degree Kelvin LED, and these will be dimmable. So we can adjust that downward uh, if necessary. Um, we're going with a cube, uh, frosted cube lens that has a cap on top. So the diffuse lighting will be outward and downward. It won't illuminate the surrounding trees and canopy uh, above this plane that these lights are set at. Uh, the, uh, uh, one of the considerations was, um, and I'll, uh, Cover it again, but one consideration was um, the competing street lighting and uh, vehicle lighting. Uh, most vehicle lighting is in a warmer range. Um, they're adjusting it, uh, the manu auto manufacturers, but um, it tends the, the automobile lights, vehicle lights tend to be a warmer light. This is in a wider 
and more toward a cool uh, light that we'll be using. Okay. Uh, tree selection. Uh, we went through a number of uh, considerations of types of trees. Um, we selected the Shawnee Brave Ball of Cypress. And I didn't study horticulture, <laughs> but it's my understanding that uh, these trees do well in this area. Um, they are an indigenous conifer. Sorry, deciduous. I always interchange those. <laughs> deciduous conifer. It's uh, uh, needle like leaves or foliage uh, is shed in the winter. Um, we looked at several types of trees that provided a lot of buried fall. Um, however, once they've, most of those trees, once they've shed their leaves, aren't terribly attractive. The bald cypress uh, has a central trunk that doesn't branch. So it maintains a, a, and mimics the high beam column or posts uh, once it's lost its leaves. So it retains that sort of vertical uh, uh, column like form all through the winter after it's lost its leaves. Uh, in the fall, it turns um, copper color. So a large expanse or grove of copper in that area should be relatively attractive. Here's an aerial uh, rendering. Um, the inclusion of additional landforms was suggested as a way to bring the eye to this uh, central work and help to integrate it into the surrounding area. Instead of creating additional landforms out along the periphery of this five by seven grid, uh, what we've done is placed additional trees around this, which helps to uh, integrate it uh, as the uh, grid moves outward, the trees diminish and the grid diminishes, which gives it a uh, random, sort of natural random appearance. However, all of the trees and posts are located on the same 20 by 20. I think that uh, accomplishes the same thing as the additional landform to bring your eye to this piece. Sorry, getting used to this. Um, the consideration of the column color or the uh, I beam uh, uh, we discussed quite a bit. Um, the issue of weathering steel uh, is not only is it a natural color, uh, being an iron color, um, but it is a nice complement to the uh, greenery. Nice contrast and complement to it. So we've rather than um, rather than painting these uh, bright colors, um, our intent is to represent a harmonious integration of the built environment represented by the I beams and the natural environment represented by the trees. Um, so rather than creating a bright contrast um, 
and juxtaposition between the I beams and the trees. Uh, we want to achieve more of a harmonious um, representation. I, I've always envisioned this as a static, tranquil, somewhat serene focal point uh, to serve as um, somewhat of relief to the busy surrounding environment. Hopefully that will be accomplished in an acceptable way. Okay, here's a, this, this represents the, uh, is a pretty good representation that shows the, the uh, various firms through this area and how the uh, light post and grid is perceived. Uh, linearly through it. Again, the predominant vantage point of, of this piece is the moving uh, vantage point of the motor. So as you move past or around this particular piece, you're going to see the trees and the posts lining up and, and that <clears throat> grid forming and morphing into other points as you move around it or past it. This, I think, illustrates how that grid lines up at, at certain vantage points. Again, the I-beam heights are adjusted. So I-beams located on, say, a six-foot berm would only be six-foot tall to match the 12-foot height of the I beams that are in the lower areas. So they establish a plane that these lights are at through this grove of trees. The trees, however, <clears throat> are going to be planted. If they're up on the berm, they will undulate with the topography as the natural environment does. The, the I beams and lights maintaining a plane through that natural environment. And another representation uh, or another angle that I think is a pretty good representation of the berm. Um, we're trying to keep the berm height at about six feet, which would put the uh, lights on that are located on the tops of those berms at approximately six feet. Uh, to hopefully mitigate tampering, that sort of thing. We certainly don't want to get a, a berm that's up where the post is only a couple of feet tall. Have people up there. Whatever. <laughs> OK, um, here's a rendering of a night thought. And obviously we don't have the street lights. Uh, represented, but there is a uh, there is ambient light around this in this representation. Uh, the canopy, I think this illustrates pretty well that the canopy of the trees is going to shade this central area and block out a considerable amount of the street lighting around it creating a darkened area, and that will accentuate the uh, interior lighting of the sphere. Here's a street level view that again shows fairly, fairly well illustrates the, um, uh, the lighting and posts lining up and establishing uh, that plane through there. Question? Comment? All right. So as Michael mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, they're looking for final approval on this. They brought the project into us once before. Oh, Camilla, it's like an army. Hey. Um, so, Council, anybody have questions for? 
Um, a couple things. Um, the caliber of tree that will be planted. What size will what size will actually go in it? I can kind of give an answer. Uh, typically, we get between two and three inch caliber. The survival rates on smaller or bigger dip really bad. Those are the ones that we've had the most success. With. So that's typically, what we range, in. we'll have to see what's ava what availability. There is. Will there be irrigation? Um, we discussed we discussed an a initial irrigation. Yeah, I don't know to, the until they're established. Likely we'll be doing tree bags and such, having water. The only reason why I asked my concern is in the reason I have I've had two of these exact tree um, at two different houses and they tend they like to grow in places where the water table is high. They don't like to grow in places where there's you know, there's not a high water table in this part of the country that don't get enough water. Um, which on the west side, um, then really the water table is high. So my concern would be is that you'd have a pretty high value rate if there's no irrigation, just because they, they tend to like, the roots go deep, but they like the water to be there. Um, my other question is, is why, did you decide to not let the columns undulate with the terrain? What was the just to establish a a horizontal plane through the trees? If the if the columns undulate up and down, the lights are True. all over. The the purpose of the columns and the lights is to establish a horizontal plane through an undulating landscape. Um, and then the, it, I was trying to get a graph of it. The light fixtures, so if we're looking at this one here, uh -huh. um, the, light, the actual light fixture is the white portion on top. Yeah. Right? And then the light will cast down post. Out, outward. Outward from, outward from the top, but the yeah. post itself won't be lit up not not directly lit from above no okay that's it thank you other questions so with a light color temperature i mean what was the thought process there of why you guys went with the cooler temperature instead of something warmer to set it apart from the ambient light that's going to be there the trap all the Traffic lights and then what have you, the street lights all be about that 5,000, 6,000 Kelvin. What, what thought process went into picking something that was going to let it just kind of mash that instead of setting it apart? You're really good, Jeff. Best question. Uh, when we had in our discussions, it was, you know, this is going to be offset from the road. And like Todd said, dim so it's, you know, it'll be. When it first goes out there, it'll be you know, maxed out. It's like, okay, what, what area is best to light the plane and the trees? Uh, Again, um, in the initial presentation, I mentioned that we're not really trying to illuminate anything with these lights. These lights are intended to be uh, perceived more as points of light that establish that again establish that plane rather than lighting up the surrounding area um, and again um, Jeff has been in discussion with uh, a particular lighting company and I I mentioned the effect that we were going for, and that's what was given back was a, a 5,000 degree range. I, I would just be concerned about that the dimming allows you to control the brightness, not the color temperature. So, I, I mean, right. again, I think it, it just might be something you think about. The question I have is, or the leathering steel. Uh, I like the 
diving the W section profile. I think it's a really simple and elegant kind of shape and it sits on the base nicely. But it really comes down to the kind of the, my concern would be with that shape and the flatness of the base, it will congregate some ice and some water down there in the pond. And, you know, I don't know what kind of fixture, uh, fasteners you're using to anchor it to the, to the foundation, but it might be worth considering uh, maybe putting a little bit of a slope on that you know, for fabricating this piece custom. You're doing them all the same pretty much, just different heights. Maybe there's a way to fabricate the base where it has a little bit of a taper. Wouldn't need much, but just to shed some water so you don't, you know, you know, long term, 10 years down the road, you almost that kind of steel, you may have some rusting. That's what you've done. All right. We look at the welded plate at the bottom that does eye bolts to into the concrete. Yeah. So it, it may just be, it, it, I'm not sure exactly how you do it, but you <coughs> anchor that a little bit. How those anchors would fast would be the real question. It's some kind of wedges or something to make that work. If we're doing a plate, it would be awfully difficult to put it. It might be better to put it on the concrete. But that could be, that could be done a lot easier than on, on a steel plate. I know, you know, the concrete's not an issue for the water, but just, yeah. you know, having that pocket in there, I just, I can't just see <laughs> 10 years down the road. Understood. Other questions or comments? Phil, I've got a quick question, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, you might have mentioned this, and it made me think about it when Tyler asked about irrigation. Did you, you know what you're planning on doing? Maybe this really isn't that important to all of you here, but I've got to ask. What you're doing with the grass that's there and the reason why i ask is there's a lot of stuff to know and around and it would be nice to not have to be there very often and still have it look decent but that's something trans systems inside you guys are just going to know it perfectly we had the discussion of whether it was kind of brought up the first meeting whether it's kind of a natural look uh, but it was kind of not the direction that was we wanted to go um, it's, it's going to be kind of sodded like the rest of the project or certain areas of the project. So this would, it would be sodded. So it would be additional mowing through there. And that's fine. I don't doubt that. We're I'm obviously we're talking about a warm season grass and not something that needs to be here. Yeah. That, 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 yeah. I just wanted to ask. I, I wasn't sure if that came up with this group before. I'm not proposing that it's uh, made of grasses that get tall or anything, but it would be awful nice to not have to be there very often. Well, that might mean you want to widen your base a little bit or create some kind of a mow strip, if you will, so you can get by there and you're not right up on top of this thing with your mower banging into it. Or have to be on there with your feet. Yeah, that would be really nice. Thank, thank you. Just something to keep in mind. It was just. Standard, I'll get to you in just a second. Oh, yeah, just standard project it. for the city public works is going to be a warm season grass and no irrigation. It's rare that they do irrigation. Um, so there's a couple exceptions out there, but it's going to be a very unique project to achieve that. Ella? Um, what you said about the light temperature, I, well, can, I missed it. I was. I'm sorry. I was late. What is what? What do you? What is this project? What is the artwork communicating? What is what is the what is it? What is it? What is the artwork about? I mean, I saw the images. But I'm just. I'm just curious. Are people meant to interact with it and walk through it, or it's fenced off? No, no, it's not okay. fenced off. Um, and the the theme. The thematic representation is the integration of the built environment and the natural. Yeah. I, I might elaborate on that. It's more of an industrial style area. So the theory was if Todd mentioned the built environment, I think to elaborate on that, it's more of an industrial environment at this location. So he's talking about transitioning from the industrial into a natural, a more natural space. That helps a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, the light temperature is a thing. I think if if in 
that cool colored light, it makes it look like, I don't know, almost like, like you yeah, like street lights, like not necessarily inviting. If you want, you said there isn't a fence. You do want people to walk through it, right? Or you don't. If somebody walks up to it, they'll be along the streets. Okay. So that, I mean, if somebody wants to walk up, <coughs> they can meander through it. There, it's also yeah, pretty high traffic in sidewalk. Okay. But it's mostly the, it's not a whole lot of driving. Walk. And I think it's not conducive to be a park street. Oh, okay. Okay. This is not conducive. To that's Southwest Boulevard. Right. <laughs> so even in this rendering that you're showing right here, it's like the middle part seems warm and the outside seems cold, even in this rendering. So that's why I'm wondering. I think you should really think about the temperature of the lights. I think that's a thing because it's such a significant part of your um, artwork. And we'll make a totally different feeling if you have cool lights versus warm. Mm -hmm. I mean, even like on this rendering, I'm looking at it, all that out there blue is cold. And then the way that looks in the middle is like a warmer feeling. But it, but it won't look like that if you use cold, a cool color light. Yeah, and actually, uh, uh, I think what's rep what's rendered there doesn't illustrate any of the street lighting or vehicle lighting. The blue around it, the blue <coughs> cool light around, it really looks like uh, rural moonlight where there aren't street lights. Street lights are going to end up looking a lot warmer than that, even though their color temperature is within that same range. Again, when uh, it, this does illustrate that. The canopy of the trees is going to create a darkened area and screen a lot of that peripheral street lighting out of this area, and that will accentuate these lights that are located within it. We can uh, consider uh, adjusting uh, the color temperature. Yeah, we'll definitely bring up our light designer during that, mm -hmm. based on you know, this conversation. And what they were talking about with mowing, I mean, what's the pros and cons of just putting turf in instead of grass where you don't have to cut it? Like, would that help for maintenance in the future? Or, no, that's not, there's no turf that looks natural enough to communicate your idea? Like artificial turf? Yeah. Artificial turf would cost on the in the millions, I believe. Oh wow! For that size of an area. Okay. Yeah, you're talking like that's bigger than a football field. Oh, okay. Um, I have no concept of the size. Yeah, no, it's 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 a, it's a substantial area. Okay. <laughs> okay. The the lighting grid itself is eighty by one hundred twenty feet, and then the trees are located out so it's it's going to be several all right thank you all right so as it yes we're what is the max height for the tallest 12 foot well be variation between six foot Yes, the 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 base height or standard height is a twelve foot ID. As these berms are built up, the uh, I beams that are located on that berm are shorter, so that the tops of all of these I beams, regardless of whether they're in a low or high area, are all on the same plane. Distance between the trees and the beam? 20 foot by 20 foot. And again, that was another reason we selected the um, Shawnee Brave Bald Cypress. They have a, a height of around 40, 50 feet and a spread of 20 feet. So 
they should reach each other at maturity, but not start creating tangled. Do you know how many lighting they have? 22. Okay, so as we look for a motion here, um, do you make a motion to approve as presented? Make a motion that has them review elements, i.e., lighting, color, or landscaping. You can make a motion that changes. You want warm lights over school. Um, you can go any one of those three ways. I will, I agree with Tyler here. Tree line lifting. Ones up on top of the berm aren't going to go as quick as the ones down the bottom, but they just like wet. They're going to grow better with, with wet. Um, with that, throw out to the Sign council for a motion to bid light. Are you saying that because these trees like wet feet and this is an area where that can happen, there's no irrigation that they won't survive? No, nope, I'm not saying that. Or <laughs> okay, I'm, just that. I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna tell you the ones that are down low are going to grow. Okay. I don't know that I have a concern they're not going to make just like wet like a relatively high water table. Right. That's something we can look at too in relation to burn locations. Make sure there's not a tree right, right up on top. You know, lower third. So their trees are all I don't think there are any trees like shown directly on top. There's more of a high beam shown on top of the burn. <clears throat> the further the help the trees they'll all they'll all get the same same amount of water there. So I'm good with that. But I think Without influence in design council, we need some type of motion that we give some flexibility. I think they need to go back to public works and figure out if this is regular warm season grass or this is native grass that's not getting mowed. For several things that are going to have to. We can't design. Ironed out. We can't design this project. Well, I mean, I know that's not our job, but I do. I do like the idea of the native grasses. I feel like with the it kind of goes or with the built versus built environment with the natural environment, like you got the post. I mean, I know that's not our job, so I don't know how we. Make a rec, but my only answer to that is you make a rec. I think we could try a rec. We could try a motion that just says the design council approves this design as presented with the with the advice that the team go back, consider long term maintenance, consider planting health, consider lighting design or leading. I find that will work. That's the motion? That was my attempt to. Okay. Sounds like a good one. I can second that. He's looking for a second and he got it from Ella. Okay. Is there any discussion on the motion? He understands the motion. You guys are understand where we're going with the comment. Okay. So no discussion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Third item on the agenda today. Mr. Perkins has got the Northwest Water Treatment Facility. For us. <clears throat> oh. Okay. Um, okay, so this is with the normal water facility. Um, before I before I get into it. Too much on here uh, just as a reminder, I guess more than anything. So we're working with two different committees. We're working with, with you guys on the design council. We also have a project steering committee made up of some council members and uh, some 
stakeholder groups. Um, so some of it's going through that project steering committee, and then we're always coming back um, to design council to get any comments and, and um, see if you give a blessing or if there's anything you want us to do different. Um, when we got into the art part of the Northwest Water Facility, that steering committee, um, we added a few people. So Ms. Irwin and Ms. Naka have been on it um, as we've went through this process that I'm going to talk about. And I know Phil came at least once. I'm not sure <laughs> what, I've what missed, happened from there. I've missed a couple. <laughs> um, Do the artist thing. I've missed a couple. And then we also had some uh, individuals from the zoo also involved at that point uh, when we got into the art elements. Um, so out at the facility, if you're, if you're not aware, it's out uh, along Zoo Boulevard across from the zoo, so to the northeast of the zoo, um, between the Big Ditch and 21st Street. <clears throat> we had three locations. Uh, one of them's changed a little bit from the initial. If, if, if you were, if you remember when we first started this, um, we were talking about some type of art element or elements along Zoo Boulevard. So between the railroad tracks and Zoo Boulevard, at something linear or points along there. Um, there's a fence as you get further into town with uh, zoo animals on it. Um, there was discussion if we continued that or some other type of uh, aesthetic improvement along there. So as we got into this, um, we started working with the railroad. It's, it's, that's all in railroad right away. The railroad right away basically comes out to the shoulder of Zoo Boulevard. Uh, railroad basically said, no, you're not putting anything in that right away. So that was out. Um, and we ended up finding a place working with our uh, design builder on the plant and finding a place down at the south point of the site. It'll actually be just inside the security fence, but it's an area with minimal work as far as the plant's concerned. So that became our new location one. And then location two is basically a long Hoover Road. Uh, from the railroad tracks up to 21st Street, that general area. Uh, there is a planned bike path through there, uh, basically all along, going all the way north on Hoover Road. If you've been out, again, if you've been out in that area, they've added the stoplight there at the intersection of Zoo and Hoover, and there's a bike path built basically going across the railroad tracks and it ends right there at the railroad tracks for now. And then the third location uh, was our admin lab building. So. And the aerial here, you'll still see the uh, lines for the self storage units that used to be there. Uh, those are gone and we have an admin lab building that's being built in that site. Um, for location three, we talked about either something inside the lobby area, that admin lab building, or just in front of the building. And where we ended up is just in front. Um, Finish off of a PDF. I'm sorry. It's not. Okay. So this is basically uh, same three, same view, but using our uh, plant, our, our plans for the project. So it, it's really, really small. Sorry. Um, the admin lab building is a rectangular area up there. And then we've got, you've seen it going up if you, if you drive Zoo Boulevard at all. First building, it's a huge rectangular uh, concrete structure. That's our filter building. The next things that most people have noticed are very large concrete circles or solids contact clarifiers or six of those. Um, recently, what most people have noticed is uh, four white tanks that have went up, stick up just above the clarifiers which are a lime storage. But there's a lot more construction going on out there. Drive by there at all. Um, so location one, uh, just some views basically out of Google Street View. Um, so we have that intersection of Windmill and Zoo Boulevard and across the railroad track. So there is a little bit of a height difference. The uh, railroad tracks kind of block that piece of land just a little bit down there at that, down there at that point. Um, there is, so there's a little bit of elevation there. If you look over the railroad tracks, um, but that's generally location one. Um, Location two, again, is out there along Zoo Boulevard, or not Zoo Boulevard, Hoover Road, um, where there's a planned bike path, basically out in front of this admin lab building. So this is a little bit closer view of that admin lab building, uh, parking lot related to it, 
and driveway into the plant. And this admin lab building is, is basically in the corner of the security fence. So the security fence for the facility itself comes out to that admin lab building. The admin lab building is the corner of the security area. And then location three, um, as I said, at, at one point, it, it could be either inside the lobby or out in front. Um, so with the way the, dir the direction the project's taken, it's going to be out here in front um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So we had, uh, uh, we have an art consultant, Nine Dot Arts out of Denver um, on the project. And the way the contract's set up, they, they are the one contact with the city. Uh, so we have one contract with them. They go through that. They're the ones running the process for selecting artists for uh, uh, contracting with artists and getting everything built and constructed. Um, they use again, they came back to our project steering committee and uh, narrow start narrowing down the artists. Uh, they had one hundred and sixty eight. Yeah, hundred. No. Two hundred. Two hundred. So we ended up doing it. Oh, for all three locations. Yeah, yeah. OK, so all three locations, we ended up with the 283 uh, artists and uh, submitted on it. Uh, we went through a iterative process and narrowed that down to nine <coughs> to three artists for each three locations, so nine artists. And then <coughs> each of those nine artists um, had submitted a, a short video uh, about about what they're proposing and a PDF document about what the proposal of what they're proposing. So what I've got in here is I've got for each of them um, excerpts from that PDF from their proposal to try to describe. I have their videos if 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 we want to go that route. If you want to see their individual videos. I have those available here. Just have to figure out how to do it here on the computer. Um, but however you want to go from there. Um, if I'd known we was doing this off PDF, I wouldn't have done it two to a page. Um, but I got it. Let me go. Okay. Maybe that helps a little bit. So this is location one. This is down there uh, at that intersection of Windmill and Zoo Boulevard. So this is kind of looking generally northeast from that intersection, um, this uh, the, the first artist, Jill. Th this is her proposal. Um, it's a, uh, a steel structure and Lindsay, you, know, you guys jump in anytime you want <laughs> in describing this, uh, a steel structure. Um, her, uh, her inspiration was two sources. So starting from the top and starting from the bottom, um, the fact that we have two sources of water is what she talked about. We have our Equus bed well water, and we have our Cheney Reservoir water. <coughs> um, it's a large structure. She had it proposed at about 36 feet. Okay. See here in a minute. Um, it is multiple shades of blue, and then it is also lit up for at night. <coughs> um, it's multiple shades of blue, so that it looks different from different directions, and it is lit up at night. It, um, it also, it's using LED lighting um, for at night and it changes the, the tone, it undulates. And I remember that word, uh, undulates the light in different shades up and down through the structure. Um, basically it is like a flow of water, represent a flow of water in it. Um, steel structure is using LED lighting. It is all self-contained. She has it using uh, uh, solar panels and a battery pack in a, in a uh, concrete base. Um, again, here's that location. So we have that intersection, Windmill and Zoo Boulevard, and it's right down there, just tucked down in that corner. There's a little bit more uh, of what she had. Um, the one comment the steering committee had uh, in regarding this was they'd like to see it something taller, like something higher, more significant. Um, being at that location. Um, what she had suggested was maybe making this concrete base taller. Um, so um, again, she's using uh, uh, solar panels to, uh, for power. Um, 
and the lights go up and down. She talks about that in the video, oh, and that's in the locations. So I don't know if you want to talk about these individually or if you want to just go through all of them. If you want to see the videos, I, I can go in and route y'all. You want to do these one by one? You want to, you want to see all three of them and then back up? Just one by one at a time. I can't read the, the dimensions. I can't read them on there and I can't read them on the printout. And you're saying the size? Yeah, so it was 36 feet tall is what she had. Uh, where am I here? It looks like nine foot one inch this way and nine foot eight inch this way. Ooh, yep. Right of it. Nine foot one by nine foot. 36 feet. Oh, 36 feet. feet. Okay, okay. Sorry, y'all. I refuse to wear my glasses. <laughs> I got it now. Thank you. Do we know, <clears throat> do we know the location or the relation of this location to the location of the animal sculptures? Because if I remember right, there are some like right there. Yeah. So there are, there's uh, gorillas right there at the intersection. And that's the last one is the gorillas there in the intersection. So those will stay and this yeah, will just happen gonna... behind it. I'm sorry. This will just happen directly behind it. Um, depending on the angle, it could be directly behind it. Yeah. Um, to, uh, <laughs> on her I had the other images of the intersection. There's there's the gorilla right there. That's the last one. And then do you know about where you're talking that this would go? Right about there. <coughs> Basically where these where these trees come to a corner, that that's 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 okay. that's behind the railroad track. Yeah, they went on the other side of the railroad track. That's pretty right. On the Vimeo link you have on there, does it show like what it looks like with the light? Like the video that you have, does it show you were describing it makes it look like water flowing or something. I think she does. And this one, I think I just had the video link and I think it's in here. Well, this is a PDF. It probably won't work, but. It should work. Ah, there you go. OK. All right.
I remember it had more videos showing the light changes, but I'm, I apologize. It, it showed it briefly. She did her research. That's good. She she did some homework. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bill, what's the thickness of the the, the steel that's it's going to be made of? Don't think it addressed. I don't think we saw that. Okay. The height of some of your buildings. So um, the filter building, which is so that that first building that started going up, is about 20, 28 feet above grade. Um, it's the tallest near building. Um, the building right next to it is generator building is about 10 to 12 feet. 36. That's <laughs> they're proposing 36. You proposed 36. The steering committee asked that you could go higher. If I have a little concern if that's just the foundation going higher, shoving it up in here. I mean, think about how the keeper got so much more dramatic when it went from here to here. Yeah. yeah. And how they do that base. Yeah. I agree with the steering committee. It needs to be bigger. Or uh, I don't know about sticking it up higher, but it's going to be lost out there. Especially during the day. At night, you're going to catch it from your eye during the day. <clears throat> if you get caught at the windmill, <laughs> Lights, you'll see it ahead of you. But with it being blue, it's, it's, something to, it's not going to have anything to really back it up. Inter interesting to see what it looks like with the plant behind it, because I mean, it plant behind it is maybe going to frame it a little bit better, I think. It'd be nice that you could get a picture of the plant that image on it. Is plant going to just be concrete or is it going to have a color? So there are some metal buildings on site that will have some color. Um, the, there is a high service pump station um, between where this is at and that filter building. Um, but most of it will be hidden behind two concrete stairwells. Um, but that, that that filter building will be a shade of it's the same shade of blue as what's in the city logo is what color that 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 uh, high service pump station. Uh, the filter building, those clear well tanks, generator building are just concrete. The thing that you're gonna see directly behind this is concrete or it's blue? I believe pretty much everything you're gonna see behind this is concrete. But like I say, there's a couple of metal buildings that are that city logo shade of blue that might show it behind it, but the majority of it will be concrete. That's the thing, because it could get lost. If it's blue and the, and the thing behind it is blue, it could it could be lost. Yeah, it's, it's just, it, I mean, it's going to be, you know, what angle you're at. Oh, okay. I can't. Well, there are a handful of trees remaining. Um, they're all in the railroad right away. So don't <laughs> we don't we don't try to we, we can't guarantee they'll be there. That's up to the railroad. We, we don't get to choose that. Um, there will be a row of trees inside the plant fence, um, but it's going to take a while for those to grow. Okay, will there be trees in between where the public is and where this art piece is? No. No. Okay. No, there's none right there at the corner. So, depending on where you're, and you, it might have a canopy behind it. As sure. A, sure. I, I, buildings I, will still be the primary backdrop. Um, is is the structure itself lit externally, or does it emit light? So my understanding is that the LEDs are basically on the surface. Of Bottom inside edge of the artwork. Rescue. Say that again. The lighting of the work will be located on the bottom inside edge of the artwork. In from view, whilst casting a beautiful and subtle glow across the entire surface. 
So it's like it runs, you're saying it runs like along the edge or something. Yeah, we know I can't show it real well, but that this is where this orange fence comes. I mean, it to be between the road tracks and what is remaining of trees right there. Where it's going to be. Oh. <laughs> Do we know if the artist's concern of making this taller is an economic concern? Based on she's got a budget, she designed it at this, and now we're trying to push it up. That was a limitation, yes, to express. So would the steering committee's idea of raising the base be in budget? So that wasn't that wasn't necessarily the steering committee's recommendation. They just wanted it taller. What she came back with was raising that base up because one of the things that was talked about was railroad tracks. And so the she came back with, well, raise the base up, that gets it more elevation with the river track view and it could still be within the budget. Okay, so are we are we totally set on locations? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are these obviously she designed it not necessarily location specific. This could go this could go somewhere else that you I don't know the answer to that. Oh, maybe that maybe that way. I think the water under the bridge. I think there's a chance it could slide a little bit. I think Bill would like to point out to Design Council that we've approved these three locations already. Yeah, <laughs> and he's being very nice, and I'm good with that. But we've approved these three locations, so um, could it adjust a little? Maybe could went out with the RFPs showing everybody this is. So the reason I say that is it's, it's a when I see it, I say, man, that's something I really want to be. I really want to go up and look at it. Yeah. And it's just you get there. You can't even get close You're not to supposed it. to get there. Yeah, and I just if uh, if we became very uncomfortable with the notion that we can't have any recourse. If not, that's fine. I mean, it'll certainly as you're driving there, you're going to see it. I mean, it'll be lit up at night, but. You know, if I want to be somewhere where I could drive close to or walk by it on a sidewalk. If you know, if there's conflict putting it over near the, the entrance building, and you know, I know there's other artwork there, but can it coexist? It's just a question. If we got really nervous, let's see what answer we get out of the back here. Yeah. Um, or where I believe you're heading with that, I would say one to keep in mind it is across the street. There is a uh, multi-use path, and it is heavily. Uh, so for what I think I hear you saying, I might suggest keep the frame of reference that if you want to take a really good look at it, then it's probably going to be the constraint of looking at it from that path. I know that there's it's a bike path. Lots of people use it for you know getting back and forth, and so I, I don't have any concerns that people are going to see it. It's just Right. Well, you know, but as far as your sizing and how does this look and, you know, the viewing experience, I think that would be the constraint is that's your vantage point is on or not. You only have to run across four lanes of traffic, five or six out there, and across the railroad tracks, and you're right there. And, and, and scale and of security. <laughs> it's just one of those deals where, you know, I, you know, if we're going to drive by it in perpetuity, I, I just, you know, we would all kick ourselves if we drove by and said, ah, missed opportunity, you know? I guess, Mike, to kind of go along with that, and I know we've already, like you said, Phil, I know that, I know that the board approved. My question is, is need it? I mean, we'll hear everybody. So basically, like, we're basically like prettying up an industrial corner. Of, I mean, you know, it's not even like a. So let's move on. I'm going to suggest we move, <laughs> move on to item two. We're going to have to come back to one. Okay. And we need to see all three before we do that. Where we're sitting right now. I hate to hash this thing out for another 45 minutes. And 
changed our mind after the second <laughs> grade. <laughs> okay. So, uh, location two, uh, a little bit different. Um, again, this is out uh, along, along the road. So, basically, between Hoover Road and uh, there's a drive and the Admiral. <laughs> So that, that, that's the general location we're at. Um, so this artist, uh, it was selected for this. We have these uh, cloud benches, is basically what I've been calling them. Um, and they're, they're, they're grouped together. They have, they'll have cutouts, um, thematic cutouts in, in a plate steel. And also on those, so these kind of just show some geometric, but she talked about being thematic uh, with different different themes based on the community. She wanted to be able to um, do some kind of community engagement with some, you know, with one or more groups and come up with ideas of themes for each of these uh, structures. And the structures would uh, basically integrate with the bike path. Uh, one of the things that the steering committee talked about and she agreed would be great. She kind of has a length in here for, for them as proposed. Um, what the steering committee talked about was basically weaving the bike path through them, um, making them more part of the bike path experience. And um, it, that would stretch them out for uh, a, a longer area. So that was something that she agreed and thought was a good idea. Uh, um, and this is one of those different angles. They act as like a bench as well uh, for along that bike path area. Um, and this is where she's talking about the uh, uh, soliciting ideas from different uh, groups in the, uh, locally. And here's here's some representations that are a little more thematic. Kind of the ideas that she has for some potential uh, cutouts in those plates. Um, they would be lit up at night, uh, basic LED lighting. And uh, here's where we talk about the QR code. So each of them would have this QR code built into it that would be related to the theme of that bench, of that structure, and could go out to whatever different website or information about them, the, you know, the clouds themselves or uh, other things about the community, uh, whatever that bench was taking. A um, little bit more information on the specifics on the metal on this one, um, if uh, you're interested in that. And that's just another example of it. That's it. Yeah, the rest of it. The ground recessed LED lights, um, smooth and rounded. Yeah. That's the general idea there. I don't have a link, but I do have a video if you video.
Questions on artist two? the location this is the one we were working on yeah i was just going to try to get a preview sorry <laughs> cool. so generally out here so this is hoover road where it comes from the intersection so you get that new lighted inter signalized intersection comes up around Hoover Road and there's area uh, here in between that Hoover Road where we have a driveway and our admin. The wall coming out? The wall is out. The wall will be out. That's, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. So th th that'll provide a little extra room with that wall. Yeah, there's there's a pretty good area there. Okay. Yeah. The public parking by chance. I mean, I know it that the parking along there, I can imagine people want to stop and interact and take photos and whatever with the clouds. I just didn't know. Oh, uh, if they do, I would hope they would use our parking lot to do it. Well, I, I didn't know if you were good city was going to allow that to happen or is it controlled parking or it is not controlled parking um whether whether, whether the city lets them stay there for how long or whatever i, I don't i couldn't answer it, it's not controlled parking it feels for that art piece and what they're trying to do it's like a really tight place and i use that bike path a lot it, Feels like it'd be better on the other side of the road where the park is, but does that path does that link up where that stoplight is? Yes. Okay. So that the long term, I'm not sure how far out. The long term, the idea of this is it goes there up to the park that's going to be up there near uh, Brooks Landfill, um, and come all the way down Hoover Road, and then use that intersection to get across to the bike paths. The county line. So, the nice thing is this is 60 feet long. Really, if we look at the parking lot, for instance, that's just two links of parking lots on the drive. That's so all the longer it is. So, they should fit in there on your road. You said the idea was to have the bike path kind of snake through it. So, I was going to say, it's going to end up being longer than 60 feet. Is it? Okay. Get the bike path to okay. go through it. I like this one. Um, my only doubt, my only concerns are the like. No, just going to throw something at me when I say this. The, like public engagement aspect. I'm like, we just trust the artist to come up with a good design and not necessarily engage the public. But you know, and like, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, these examples don't really do it for me. Okay. Will they will the whatever idea she comes up with will that, will that come back? Oh wait, yeah. That, that, okay. I'm making the assumption we will discuss that with them. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the themes or whatever she comes up with there. I like I like the overall idea. I think they're really cool. Just worry about the like what kind of limiting, isn't it? The creativity limited, doesn't it? By you know, just having to more mobilized, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We're doing something cool and like we're putting cows on it, you know? Like. That's, that, that, that's because she hasn't had community engagement. She's making assumptions about what, what Wichita and Kansas is based upon the internet. So, because she's from LA, right? So that's why she put cows and teepees and stuff like that. She has no idea what is going on here. She's not going to come. Well, that's why she needs community engagement. <laughs> she needs people from around here to say, this stuff doesn't make sense. We don't have any cows in Wichita right up against the fence. So we got to go a little bit, 20 minutes out, and then you can get some cows. But I'm just saying, she does need community engagement. Otherwise, she's going to make assumptions like this. So if you don't like this, then you need to get, she needs the input. 
I'm sorry, I'll step in. Hang on a minute, James. I have a hand back here. It's sorry, I didn't see you. Long... I'd actually like to say, let him think. Okay. Yeah, I'll step in front of you for a Go second, Clayton. Sorry. Uh, so on our design, the only thing, I don't have an issue with the whining portion. We just have to make sure that we meet certain design criteria for like the the curve links and, and such. So I told that to the, the guy that the meeting with you on Thursday. Understood that. I, I, I think we'd start that. But I did tell him that the, the guy from Denver a while back. And so hopefully he's accounted for that. I just want to make sure that it can't be too tight of a turn because of the bicycle uh, requirements. Right. And that's what we were waiting for that meeting on Thursday before we yeah. How long of an area we're talking? I just wanted to get that out here so that people understood that it's not going to be like a, a have making people slow down to two, you know, to a crawl and get through something like that. You know, we have a certain criteria that we have to meet on a bicycle path for the curve length of a bike path. So I don't know if, what you had, Clayton. Sorry. No, you're kind of actually touching a little bit on what I was going to make there, but. Uh, and I should say that um, um, I'm a bike commuter myself. I do use this area. I used to actually bike to the 37th Bridge. Um, but I say that in the part that uh, for people living north of the uh, Central County Park, I actually look at this as an important route uh, coming for the future, um, especially for people that don't ride quick or walk. So I would say this that I'm seeing the uh, the start of it looks very interesting to me, particularly for families going to Central County Park or the zoo, uh, especially if you have kids. That looks like a great start of a uh, basically a rest stop um, for kids. In light of that, I'm trying to make out to the right of way, particularly across the street. Um, because the best improvement that I can see for this is uh, when it's 4.30 and you're going, uh, or let's say it's 1 o'clock and you're going to the Sedgwick County Park and it's August, um, especially if you're going to have metal structures, um, anything to provide shade and cool things down is going to be very welcome uh, for a family with four-year-olds. If there's the possibility uh, across the street, pecan trees or uh, oaks or something like that, that in that late day heat, you could cast some shadows on. Um, that would probably help out. I don't know what you got on the right. That's a lot. Okay. So, any other questions on artists two at the moment? Push us on to R3. Okay, so before I drop down, if it's something on this page. Again, location three, it, it was left open to be either inside or out in front of the admin lab building. The direction it went was out in front. I'm, I'm going to show you, but basically it'd be right here in the area where these sidewalks come together in front of this wall of windows. So this wall of windows is looking into that lobby reception area. Um, uh, that front area of the building. So then, all right. Uh, go further into it. This is this is the, basically the start of it. So a, a little bit more background on this one too. So um, this particular one, they were. They, their proposal is written to be at location two, out along the bike path. Um, but we ended up going with them on the location three um, with the same idea. And they'd written their proposal with basically three different proposals. But this one with the water drop uh, is, is the one that uh, we're moving forward with. Time. So yeah, again, so they, they their proposal was showing it with two water drops out here along the bike path. Uh, now we're just talking about one water drop up in front of the building. Uh, a little bit more about the water, you know, what it, at night and day. It's not always lit up. 
It has a button. Push a button to light it up. I'll show you the button here in a minute. Um, and same idea. The cutouts uh, for this, uh, what they had proposed was using uh, different symbols for water. So like what we use on plan sheets, plan symbols uh, for water and water words, water related words and, and uh, possibly a map or something. Um, different things related to the water and, and or water in general um, is what would be coming through in light. Um, no cutouts. Um, it, it, it's a stainless steel uh, with a blue tint to it. Um, LED, again, it has an LED light. I think he has, there's a push button. I mean, it's, you walk up to it and push a button on it. It have a, uh, a sidewalk coming up and around it. I thought there was a detail that showed the light inside it. Maybe that was in the field. Okay, guess not. I'm sorry. I thought there was a detail that showed how the light was inside it. Um, and then that so. Relative distance connection, like, does have to be really dark? I'm probably not gonna be a good person. That's kind okay. of a judgment call there. Um, how well it showed up in different amounts of darkness, I'm not sure. Well, I was just thinking in front of your building, it'll be lit, right? Uh, there'll be some lighting, it'll be in a passive that storefront. There's lights inside, they're all light or something. So I think the sculpture wall, uh, two very different presences during right. the daytime and during the but neither one of them better. Sorry, you done? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to start that. Cut him off because rest of it's about the other two. 
Questions for Bill? Yeah. Uh, five and a half foot. Five and a half foot tall. Um, I don't Sorry. We're getting one. It's just one, one unit. One so five and a half foot. Region two had a larger budget than region three. Could you go back to your picture that showed where this was originally going? Where it showed where it's originally. Oh, where it shows it along the bike path. I don't know. Like that? You showed us in the very beginning. Was going to go oh. The island or in this island. It's really yeah. proposed for the. That's what. Yeah, that's what they had written the proposal for. That's what I'm asking. Oh, oh gosh! Okay. We I'm did sorry. that proposal. We either were going to do something inside the building, something in the core area. Uh -huh. And so that's what we, we and, and I don't think we're really set yet. The, the main discussion was talking about putting it here. This is where that wall of windows was I was talking about that goes into this lobby area. Um, that, that wall of windows, we, we've been talking about this right here. I know this out here was some an other area that was talked about as a possibility. Have a preference. I'm fine with moving it out to the bike path. No, 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 council, but I don't have a problem with the saying path. that's where it's going. It's not going to the bike path. It was originally yeah. proposed for the bike path. Right. Um, but during review, yeah. Thank you. That's where I'm going. I was going the same place. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. It needs to be up by the door. I missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where we're looking at it going. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, so I'm not sure where we sit. So, we've been at this a while. We have, so we're looking today, this is my interpretation, to approve the concept for the three artists doing. Typically, at that point, so we come back one more time with the final project to this magnitude. We can ask that it comes back two more times, one more time middle and then at the end because it's a big enough project we can determine how many times we use this. Um, it's got a great point on item one. It's cool enough that you want to walk up and touch it. Sitting there with barbed wire fences and bend up to it. I understand that. We can talk through that. Um, we want to do a motion where we approve the design concepts. First, whatever it's called, the first round of uh, the design concept with the, with the additional concern of the location of the first object. Is, is that even? I guess maybe. I, there's no reason to do a motion for that if it's not an option. Yeah. Well, I think it is an option. I think if we look at now, I'm just speaking out loud. No, nobody, I could, I've been wrong a lot in my life, so that's fine. We can move this to a different location. If we do, it's going to end up here by two and three. And we're going to have that entire water treatment facility with nothing more cool was to have something down there that not only along the new Boulevard 35 had some verticality and some life. And, you know, well, maybe that doesn't matter anymore. Now we're at this point, things change. So, are we? Are, is there going to be any treatment done to the side of that? Building? Are there going to be any treatment done to the side of that building? No. No lighting, no nothing. It's just going to live there. There is. There's lighting up under. The I'm sorry, not this building. The one that's right up against. We're trying to begin soon. Big warehouse building. No. Oh, no. It is just a concrete structure. At night, we'll, uh, my imagination is being a, a plant with 24 hour capabilities, the security concerns, and all that. Is this going to be lit up like a Christmas tree? Touch all night? So uh, there will be lights. I mean, we will have tall pole lights out there. 
but it's not going to be lit up like daytime. Um, it, it's it's going to be a diminished light. I get the concept that we were looking to have art down, illuminating some portion of the south, the south treatment plant. But these art pieces, we've all seen them as a collective. They're, they've got to be engaged with the community bypass and people walking and they should be clustered together. And I mean, let's not highlight this, this, you know, unattractive concrete you know, buildings that are done. I mean, let's do it up here where there's a lot of activity. I think there's a there's a synergy, you know, when yeah. we put these together and, and they they're far enough apart where they don't take away from each other, but they they become more important when they're together. I don't know, that's just one way of looking at it. So before we continue this conversation, I'm gonna look at Lindsay. Do you have any heartburn for this conversation or it's gonna cause so maybe I'm going to volley it back to Bill because we had significant conversation and delays on issuing the RP and the RQ for everything because of the site location. So I feel like there was significant conversation saying these are this is what we have available to work with. So I'm not sure if there is a relocation option for. I, I believe the option is valid. I believe we we could do it. The, the, the one thing, and, and I don't think that they would, I'm not saying they would disagree. I do have to go back to the other steering committee and get their blessing to do that as well. So I've, I've got to get to where both of you are concurring here. <laughs> We're kind of, and I'm putting words in your mouth. We're basically looking at this thing falling up here around the administration building think, somewhere. I think that's right. I think I'm going to guess the artist would be happy the position, you know, with a, a more prominent location for their artwork, as long as it wasn't taking away from it being prominent, you know, if it's it's too close, it's a big piece, and so you don't want to get it in there and get it comfortable. But I guess what I would say is I'd be willing to do a motion that improves these these concepts. They're all great, in my opinion, and with uh, with the direction back to staff to go and explore another option for a location closer to a public access oh I, I couple of questions sorry um i have a little bit of concern about maintenance and and uh, vandalism with the solar panels because she's she's proposed using solar panels i have a little bit of concern about that and then a question is I mean, are you willing to make a recommendation in a specific area or who, who are you wanting to make that determination of a specific area so, so when we way back machine here we, we actually we literally looked on the plan and said, here's where we want the pieces, right? Kind of. It was brought to us and we approved it. I guess, um, is it our place to say where we think it should go? Do we understand the site well enough? I feel like that's probably on the art. I think it's maybe our consultant to figure yeah, that out. Our art consultant for, I'm not drawing her name, art. Nine dot arts. Nine dot arts. So, we could suggest nine dot arts reevaluate the location of all three of these pieces and try to gather probably around the administration building. They can play with that. Especially then, with with that second piece, you know, growing from sixty feet. We're not real sure. Is that one hundred twenty or three hundred feet? Or you know, let's let's kind of the solar panel. Yeah, can they go on the building or something? I mean, there are a lot of things. We're not saying it has to relocate. We're saying let's explore if it can relocate. Some um, of you are saying it may it may not have to relocate. I say it should. <laughs> well, I, I would but, second that. Yeah, I mean, what's in my motion? <laughs> all right. I, I was going to say with solar panels, I, I just have concern about, you know, it's not like it's sunny all the time here. And if those lights are on for most of the evening time and then nighttime during the winter time, the battery storage and the PVs are going to allow it to light all the time. I feel like I'm running on lighting design grades today, but it's, it, I mean, it's real deal. Oh, I mean, you're here. But if we do, but if we do move it back to the admin building or closer to the admin building, yeah, it gives us the opportunity then to power off the building and you're much more certain that way, right? Get the full effect all the time. 
I, I do like the piece. It's just that I'm concerned that if we don't have the battery power to it, it's going to light up for some of the night and then it's going to be dark the rest of the time. And... So it's been maybe the motion is to have the art consultants review the location considering the, the, the solar power, um, the longevity of the solar power to the piece. And its accessibility to the public. We approve the rest of the design. All the designs are submitted. Is that okay? Okay, so you started that motion. Started okay. you get to phrase it now. Adding that to your. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask maybe like a follow up? Yeah. The scale of it was different. Would it be entertained differently in this site? Or is it we don't want our. I think they got such a nice piece of art, they see it locked up down in a corner and the scales off a little bit with the location, but I'm guessing. I would say probably part of the reason why they want it to be taller is because it's so far away. I think if you put it closer, you don't have to raise it. I mean, and I think you're still going to, let's say, let's say, I mean, I don't know the site very well. I mean, I wasn't really part of any of this. I work, so I'm, I, what it looks like to me is we've got a fence that runs kind of in the southern direction down towards zoo boulevard and there might be a spot kind of closer to zoo boulevard where that thing you're driving north on new zoo boulevard it's a beacon there i don't know it's just so it's my gut just tells me to put it kind of south in that zone that's just south of the building and east of the of hoover that's just i don't know the site very well maybe looking at it totally different think anything 30 feet tall right there is going to be prominent enough i don't think she's got to raise it anymore I don't think that's going to be the case. I mean, I drive by it every day. Whatever location, the, whatever the alternate locations there needs to be a rendering that shows what it looks like, like with whatever buildings will be in the background. So then you don't, you don't have to have the concern of there's a blue building behind a blue sculpture, and then it's like camouflaged. So if I was going to do something to be being able to get a rendering you from our design builder. I, I'm not guaranteeing I can do that. But I, I, we will ask. Asking. Well, yeah. Anna, you think you got a motion or we need to <laughs> <laughs> Could someone <laughs> restate the motion for me? Okay. Uh, design council is going to the motion I would propose is that uh, we uh, approve the design concepts as presented. Ask that the staff go back and uh, require that the, the art consultant consider a new location or public uh, position, likely closer to the new building. Also, to consider using permanent power to the piece, the first piece, other than, um, other than a solar panel installation. Do you like a return for final design or return recommendation? I think they're sitting back twice. So because we don't know what the cutouts are going to be or what's going to be on the water droplet. Alice said no cows. So therefore, <laughs> we need to see what the cutouts end up being oh, and what God. the water droplet ends up being. <laughs> no cows. Don't put that. No. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and we'll come back no matter what in a final. Oh, okay. All three of them. They're both no matter what. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. We have a second. Second. Discussion on the motion. I don't know that I'm uh, not in favor of where that number one location is. I mean, I get the interaction and all that, but uh, I Googled. The uh, keeper of the planes is 44 foot tall. Oh. I know it's sitting on a bigger pedestal, but when I drive by a McLean, I can see it and I experience it. There's a lot of people that drive down a Zoo Boulevard that if that thing is big enough and prominent enough can experience it, but if it's tucked up here by this building, they experience it like I experience the keeper of the plane. Where it's like all the thing is competing with the building. That, that's my 
I think on it. And and if you can prove to us that there's not a blue building behind it, <laughs> that it, I mean, with the rendering they had there, the blue sky was kind of washed. I mean, it really minimized the impact of it. And, and to me, that's what I want to be able to see at the next. If we're using 235 as a visual too. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I'm, I can be convinced it's not the right location, but I'm not convinced it isn't. If it is done well. And, and I, I drive that road all the time. A bike, I drive it in a car. That is a pretty, that can be a pretty prominent spot. It, it, I know you got a railroad in the way, you got other things, but you got creative designers too. Well, the motion that was made, I think, still doesn't mean that we're eliminating that option. It just means we want to see some exactly. comparison. I, I just wanted to get that in as part okay. of the discussion. Well, two options that can work. Let's explore them first. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Is that ramble what we're conveying? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have, we record the meeting. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This is unanimous. That was rough. Hour, too. That's not bad. We haven't had that much excitement in the council here. <laughs> no, we don't need snacks in here. The, uh, the library. Did the library. Oh, yeah. Oof. Yeah. So we want snacks. <laughs> we're going to do as may arise. Uh, I know he's not here at the moment, and so I don't butcher it. Would you um, let the design council know about our Armando's report? Uh, our Armando was selected as KMEW's 2023 artist. Featured artist, maybe W. Yeah, selects an artist every year to be promoted, and their design work is seen at some of their fundraising. A lovely video that was distributed by uh, highlighted his work as an individual artist, but also throughout the community. A lot of it has been reflected in participation with Design Council, both as a member and as a public artist. And give him a high five. So I've been out of town lately with with some uh, volunteer work and with a funeral. So I was delinquent and connecting with Lindsay on need to put together two subcommittees. So Lindsay and I are going to try to get together this in presentation to the design council on who to put on these two subcommittees. We may be doing that by email because we just don't want to wait till the April the April. Meeting set in place and start running specifically the CIP set. That's, that's an important one. I'm not saying there's not going to be some overlap, but my goal is spread this out amongst all the like council members so we don't have the same people on all of them. Anything else on that? As Mayor Rice? All right. Well, we'll call this uh, meeting adjourned for today. Well,